So this is for assignment number two or activity two, Night Sky. So really what it's about, you can find it instead of classwork, Google Classroom, um, and it's going to say 5B at home, Night Sky. This is a little bit different than what you would have seen if you were in class, but I'm going to try my best to explain it to you so that way you fully understand why we're doing it, but also how to do it. So it really starts back with ancient Egypt about 3,000 years ago. Um, 3,000 years ago, the ancient Egyptians made their pyramids, but they didn't just throw them in any old place. They picked their positions on purpose. They'd actually track the night sky, and there's a video here that tells you some really cool stuff, and I'm going to leave this in here for you so you can watch it when you want to. But let's check out the pyramids if I were to stare at them from space. You can see there are three pyramids, and the three pyramids are placed pretty much in a diagonal line. And what scientists realized was once we were able to look at it from space, we realized that those pyramids, they were actually put there on purpose. It wasn't because they were close to a river or close to a hill or some farmland, but it's their position that what really mattered. You see, the ancient Egyptians watched the night sky and every summer and winter solstice, they would see a constellation known as Orion. And interestingly enough, the belt of Orion is three stars. And those three stars actually line up with the three pyramids in Giza, which is pretty incredible that they were able to do this without calculators, without major telescopes. They simply did it by tracking the night sky. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to be tracking the night sky and trying to find constellations, stars, and planets, so that way you can track them throughout the year. And so one of the things we have to understand is what a constellation is. A constellation is simply a group of stars that form a pattern. Here's one of them you may be familiar with, known as the Big Dipper. Um, it's actually, you can see it inside of Ursa Major. Then there's another one called Draco, which is another common one, and then another one called Cancer. You see, these are groups of stars that when you connect them together, they form a pattern. And these patterns are what a lot of ancient astronomers used to help them navigate, to help them celebrate certain seasons. And they did this based off of the solstices and equinoxes that we've been studying in class. And so we're really going to look at those four, or those four times a year to help us better understand how to track the night sky. And so one of the things I'm going to show you is how to use and track the night sky using solar system scope. So I want you to watch closely, but if you get lost, what I've done is I've actually put all of the instructions inside of this slideshow for you. And it explains how to do everything that I'm about to show you how to do. So the first thing you have to do is inside of Night Sky 5B for you guys at home, you're gonna see Solar System Scope. Now we've used this before when we were doing uh, things early on with the planets. And so when we click on this, it takes us straight to Solar System Scope, which for some reason mine is still loading and I don't know why normally it goes a lot faster oh there it goes it's just clicking in gear and it should be loaded here any second ah there it goes and so now I'm in night sky but right now you're looking at the solar system this doesn't look like our night sky i mean it's not what it looks like if we were standing on the ground and wanted to look up and the great thing about this program is it allows us to look at the night sky so the first thing we have to do is we click on these three dots over here once i click on them it's going to give me an option for night sky go ahead and click on that once you click on night sky it's going to show you actually looking up in the night sky from the ground Obviously the green part is the ground, but up here you can see all the different constellations. Only problem is when you guys first do this, it's not gonna be from Stoutfield. We wanna make sure that we are doing this from Stoutfield. So to change our location, there's a little globe down here. We're gonna click on that little globe. And you wanna make sure that where it says north, we change it to 40 degrees north and 86 degrees west. Those are the exact coordinates of Stoutfield Elementary. And I'm going to click OK. Now we're at Stoutfield. Even though you can't see the school, these are the coordinates. And if you were to look up in the sky during the nighttime, you would find these constellations. Now right now my time says 2027. What that means is it's 827 PM. But you know, when you guys are at school or if you're looking at this during the day, the, you can't really see the stars. 
So we're gonna change the time to a guaranteed stargazing time. We're gonna change it to midnight. Now this is a 24 hour clock. So once you hit midnight, it doesn't do 24 or it doesn't even do 12. It starts you back over at zero. So I'm gonna change that to zero. Now you can do this two ways. You can just click and hold. You don't have to click over and over and over again. And then I'm now looking at midnight on November 6th, 2020. I can see up in the sky and I can see these different constellations. There's the, the moon. But over here, if I keep looking through the sky, I should be able to see a few planets as well. For example, Uranus and Mars are visible. Eris, which is a dwarf planet, is also visible, but it's not something that you would be able to see with your eyes. You'd have to have a special telescope to do that. And even to see Mars, you would need it. Now, Uranus, you could actually see tonight if you were to look up in the sky. Neptune is another one that you'd probably have to see using a special telescope because it's so incredibly far away. But these are the things we see in the night sky. So let's talk about what you're going to do with the night sky assignment. So to complete the night sky assignment, we're going to pick five objects. But before we talk about that, I want to show you where the worksheet is. The worksheet you're going to fill out is right here in Activity 2. And it says Activity 2 Night Sky Worksheet. Well, that makes sense. If you click on it, it's going to give you some criteria and constraints. And the criteria says locate five objects. And when I hear the word criteria, this is what you do. You're going to locate five objects in the night sky on four separate dates. Now, you could probably guess what those dates are. The summer solstice, the winter solstice, the fall equinox, and the spring equinox. And if you completed assignment number one, or activity number one, you would have, you would have found the summer solstice, the winter solstice, the fall equinox, and spring equinox. But if you did not complete this activity one, you can't do activity two because you need those dates. So I would go back to night sky activity one and I have it here at the at home to complete that because you need those dates. Now you're going to use those dates to help you complete activity two. You see, you must only find constellations, stars or planets. Sorry, no dwarf planets, no comets, no spacecraft, only constellations, stars or planets. Why? because those are the ones that you can see with your eyes. I want you to be able to go outside at night, look up in the sky and say, I know what that is. You also must use the location of 40 North and 86 West, which is Stoutfield Elementary. You must also use the dates and it says 2019, that should just say for summer and winter solstice and spring and fall equinox. You're gonna get that from activity one and you must use the same five objects every time. What that means is if you're going to choose Jupiter for the summer solstice, then you're going to type in Jupiter here for the winter solstice as well and do it for the spring equinox and fall equinox. It's important that you do the same over and over because we call those controls in science. The only thing that we're changing, our independent variable, is our date. The thing that we're going to measure is the direction. We're going to measure where it is in the night sky on each of these dates. And everything that we do in activity two is gonna help you in activity three, hopefully when you're back with us. So when I look at object constellation, I'm gonna do one with you. The first one I'm gonna pick is, I wanna pick a constellation. One of my favorite constellations, I'm gonna show you how to search for one. You click the magnifying glass, you go to constellations, and I'm gonna to go to my favorite constellation, which is Orion. I chose Orion because of the pyramids, and actually, if you were to look up in the night sky tonight, you could see Orion. Now, there's Orion. Right now, tonight, Orion is in the southeast sky. But I wonder where it was in the summer solstice. Well, I remember from activity one, summer solstice was June 20th. So to change that date, I'm going to click on the date at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to go to June. Now, notice how I'm going to leave the time the same but I'm gonna to go to June 20th and I wanna find where Orion was on June 20th at zero, zero, so I gotta change that back. And I'm gonna look for Orion. Well, I look up in the night sky and guess what? Orion is not in the night sky. Well, that's no good, it's in the ground. So what do I do on my paper? 
Well, the first thing I do is I, here I type in Orion, but instead of telling which location it's in, I'm not going to. It's not in the night sky, and if it's not there, I'm not going to record it. So I know that in the summertime, I cannot see my favorite constellation, Orion. But I am going to put the date up here. For me, I chose 6 slash 20. And the time, it was pretty easy to remember. 0 colon 0 0. So if it's not in the sky in the summer, I wonder if it's in the sky in the winter. Now I remember from activity 1, the winter solstice was December 21st. So let's go and see if we could find Orion on December 21st. So I start skipping and I go through December again. Click on 21. Make sure my time is set for 00. zero. And I'm gonna follow the white arrow on my screen. Let's see if I can find Orion here. Following the arrow, looks like it's gonna be in the night sky on September or December 21st, and sure enough, there's Orion. But where do I put it? Well, I need to look down, kind of scroll down a little bit, and see that Orion is mostly to the south. You're gonna kind of have to choose which one it's closest to, but for me, I'm gonna say on December 21st, it's gonna be closest to the south. So on my paper, I go back to Orion. I'm gonna type in Orion, and I'm gonna click an X by the south. I'm going to do that again for the fall equinox and the spring equinox. Then I'm going to choose four more objects to do the same thing with. Now those four objects could be any planet, constellation, or star. But remember, it can't be a dwarf planet. You cannot track the moon. We want to track things that we can track with our own eyes. And yes, I know you could track the moon with your own eyes, um, but we want to track things other than just our moon. So that's our requirement for this assignment. Once you've completed that for all of them, you're ready for activity three, and you're going to need this to complete activity three, which hopefully you'll be back in school by the time I'm able to show you guys that. If not, I'll be making another video to hopefully help you out. Please feel free to reach out to me if you've got any questions, and you can put any comments or questions that you have on the actual assignment where it says here you can click on some comments, but make sure you're going here to 5B activity or at home, night sky activity two. Also in there, I put a Quizlet for you. So that way you can study those words that we've been working on because when you come back, those words are gonna be something we use every single day. All right, good luck.